The wind howled through the sails of the Crimson Cutlass as Captain Dorian Black stood at the helm, his eyes fixed on the horizon. His crew, hardened men who had seen their fair share of danger, worked silently below, preparing for the raid they were about to launch. A merchant ship, ripe for the taking, had been spotted just a day's sail away, and the promise of gold filled the air with a sense of eager anticipation. But something gnawed at the back of the captain's mind, something he couldn't shake. The sea had been unusually calm, the skies too clear. It was as if the world itself was holding its breath, waiting for something terrible to happen. As the sun began to set, casting an orange glow across the water, one of the crewmen, an old sailor by the name of Harkins, began to tell a story. His voice, raspy from years of salt air, carried a weight of warning. You ever heard of the ship of no return? Harkins asked, his eyes glinting with a strange intensity. The younger sailors scoffed, but the older ones grew quiet. They say, Harkins continued, that when your time is up, when death is breathing down your neck, a ship appears on the horizon. Black sails, no wind to fill them, and no crew but the souls of the damned. Once you see it, there's no turning back, one by one. You disappear, claimed by the ship. Superstitious nonsense, one of the younger men muttered, shaking his head. Is it? Harkins said, his voice low. Tell that to the men who vanished without a trace. Tell that to the captains who watched their crew disappear one by one, until they were the last to go. Captain Black listened in silence, his eyes narrowing. He didn't believe in ghost stories, but there was something unsettling about the old man's tale. And then, as if in response to Harkin's words, a shadow appeared on the horizon. At first, it was just a blur, barely visible against the setting sun, but as the light faded, the outline of a ship began to take shape, black sails moving steadily across the water without a single gust of wind to drive it. The crew fell silent, their eyes locked on the ghostly vessel. Captain, Harkins whispered, his voice trembling, it's come for us. As the ghostly ship drew closer, the crew of the Crimson Cutlass stood frozen in place, their eyes locked on the dark vessel that now loomed before them. Its black sails billowed, yet the air was still. The ship seemed to glide across the water without sound, as if it were not bound by the same laws as their own. Captain, Harkins whispered again, his voice barely audible. What? do we do? Captain Black stared at the ship, his mind racing. He had never believed in ghost stories, but this, this was something else. The ship was real, there was no denying it, and the uneasy feeling that had been gnawing at him all day had now grown into a cold, creeping dread. Before he could issue an order, a cry pierced the air. Where's Rook? One of the crewmen shouted, looking around wildly. The men scanned the deck, their hearts pounding in their chests. Rook had been standing at the bow just moments ago, but now he was gone, vanished without a trace. He was right there, another sailor muttered, pointing to the spot where Rook had been. I swear it! Panic rippled through the crew as they searched the ship from bow to stern, but Rook was nowhere to be found. It was as if the sea itself had swallowed him whole. No one had seen or heard a thing. That ship, Harkins muttered, his face pale. It's here for us, just like I said. The crew exchanged uneasy glances, their fear palpable. They had faced danger before, storms, battles, mutiny, but this was different. This was something they couldn't fight. As night fell, the atmosphere aboard the Crimson Cutlass grew even more tense. The ghost ship remained visible in the distance, always just out of reach, its black sails glowing faintly in the moonlight, and then, one by one, 
the crew started to vanish. First, it was Briggs, then Carrick. Each time, no one saw or heard anything. They were simply gone. The men began to mutter darkly, fear spreading like wildfire through their ranks. They could feel the ship watching them, waiting to claim them. Captain Black knew he had to act, but as he stood on the deck, staring at the ship of death, he couldn't shake the feeling that there was something more going on, something the crew wasn't telling him. Captain Black couldn't shake the sense that something was being hidden from him. The vanishing crew members had one thing in common. They each had a dark history. Secrets buried deep beneath the surface of their pirate lives. The captain decided to find out what was going on before the ship of death claimed them all. Late that night, as the ship rocked gently in the calm sea, Captain Black summoned Harkins to his cabin. The old sailor had been on edge since the ghost ship first appeared, and Black knew he was hiding something. Tell me, Harkins, Black said, leaning forward, his voice low. What do you know about that ship? Harkins shifted uncomfortably, his eyes darting around the room as if the walls themselves were listening. It's a, as I said, Captain. The ship of no return comes for those who've escaped death, those with blood on their hands. It takes the souls of those who've wronged others, dragging them down to where they belong. Black narrowed his eyes. And what about my crew? You're saying each of those men was marked by death? Harkins hesitated, then nodded slowly. I, Captain, they weren't innocent. None of us are. They've done things. Things the sea hasn't forgotten. Captain Black felt a chill run down his spine. He had always known that piracy came with a cost. But this was something darker. Something beyond mere justice or revenge. The ship wasn't just taking any crew. It was taking those who had sinned. Over the next few hours, Black investigated his crew, speaking to each of the remaining men in turn. As he questioned them, the truth began to unravel. Each of the vanished crew members had been hiding a secret. Briggs had betrayed a former captain for gold. Carrick had killed an innocent during a raid, and Rook had been a mutineer on another ship. One by one, the pieces fell into place. The ship had come for them because they were all guilty. But Black wasn't innocent either. He had committed his share of sins, plundering, betrayal, and murder in cold blood. His hands were far from clean. As the night wore on, the captain found himself pacing the deck, his mind racing. The ghost ship remained in the distance, watching, waiting. He knew it wouldn't stop until it had claimed every last one of them. And then it would come for him. Suddenly, there was a scream from below deck. Black rushed down, his heart pounding in his chest. When he reached the crew quarters, he found Finch standing over the bed of another vanished crewman, an empty bed. The man had disappeared without a sound, just like the others. We're cursed, Finch whispered, his voice trembling. That ship, it's come for us, Captain. Black gritted his teeth, his hands curling into fists. No, he growled. I won't let that ship take us. But even as he spoke the words, he knew the truth. The ship wasn't just here to take his men. It was here to take him, too. Captain Black stood on the deck of the Crimson Cutlass, his fists clenched as he stared at the ghostly ship in the distance. He could feel its pull like a noose tightening around his neck. The remaining crew members huddled together, their faces pale and eyes wide with fear. They all knew it now. There was no escaping this. The wind picked up suddenly, howling through the sails with unnatural force. The sea beneath them churned, waves slapping violently against the hull. The ship was being drawn toward the ghost vessel, pulled by an unseen current. Harkins stumbled forward, his voice barely audible over the wind. 
Captain, it's over. We're done for. But Captain Black wasn't ready to give in. We fight, he barked. We fight until the end. Just as he spoke, a massive wave crashed over the deck, knocking several men off their feet. One of them, Finch, slid toward the railing, his hands desperately grasping for anything to hold on to. Black reached out to grab him, but before he could, Finch's body was yanked upward as if by invisible hands, and in an instant he was gone, vanished into the mist. The crew gasped in horror, backing away from the spot where Finch had stood. They knew the truth. The ship of no return was here, and it had come to claim them all. The wind howled louder, and the ghost ship loomed closer, its black sails towering above them. The deck of the spectral ship was filled with shadowy figures, its crew long dead, their hollow eyes staring out across the water as they waited for the souls they had come to collect. One by one, the remaining men began to disappear. Each time it was the same. No sound, no struggle, just gone. The ship was claiming them, and there was nothing they could do to stop it. Black stood alone at the helm, his heart pounding. He knew he was next. The ghost ship was almost upon them, its presence so overwhelming that it felt like the very air had been sucked from his lungs. He closed his eyes, preparing for the end. Captain Black stood alone on the deck of the Crimson Cutlass, his eyes locked on the ghostly ship that now towered over him. The air was thick with an unnatural stillness, as though the sea itself had fallen silent, waiting for what came next. The spectral crew of the Ship of No Return stood at attention, their hollow eyes glowing faintly in the moonlight, watching him, judging him. He knew his time had come. Suddenly, a voice echoed across the water, a deep, guttural sound that chilled Black to the bone. Captain Dorian Black, the voice called slow and deliberate. You have cheated death for too long. Black's heart pounded in his chest as he searched for the source of the voice. From the shadows of the ghost ship, a figure stepped forward, tall, cloaked in darkness, its face hidden beneath a hood. The figure raised a skeletal hand, pointing directly at Black. Your sins are many, the voice continued, and now you will pay the price. Black swallowed hard, his mind racing. He had known the risks of piracy, of living a life outside the law, but he had never imagined it would come to this, facing judgment from the dead. His hands shook, but he drew his sword, determined to face his fate head on. I won't go without a fight, Black growled, raising the blade toward the figure. The hooded figure let out a low, sinister laugh. There is no fighting death, Captain. You have been marked, and now you will join the others. The ship lurched beneath Black's feet, and the water around the Crimson Cutlass began to swirl, as if the sea itself was coming to life. Dark, shadowy tendrils reached up from the depths, coiling around the ship, pulling it closer to the ghost vessel. Black's grip tightened on his sword, but he knew it was useless. There was no escape in this. One by one, the shadows closed in, wrapping around his legs, pulling him toward the edge of the deck. He fought, slashing at the air, but his sword passed through the shadows like mist. The tendrils tightened, dragging him closer to the ghost ship. And then, just as he felt himself being pulled overboard, Black stopped fighting. He lowered his sword, his breathing ragged. There was no use in resisting. This was his fate. He had known it the moment the ship of no return appeared on the horizon. The figure on the ghost ship tilted its head, watching him closely. Do you surrender, Captain? Black looked up, his eyes meeting the hollow gaze of the figure. I... He whispered, his voice hoarse, I surrender. The shadows released him, and for a moment there was silence. 
The ghost ship seemed to retreat slightly, its crew fading back into the mist. But Black knew it wasn't over. The ship had claimed its souls, his crew, and now it was his turn. Without a word, Black stepped to the edge of the deck, staring down into the dark, churning water below. He felt the pool of the ship behind him, urging him forward, but there was no need. He was ready. With one last breath, Captain Dorian Black stepped off the edge of the Crimson Cutlass and into the cold, dark sea. The water closed over him, and the world went silent. When the storm cleared, there was no sign of the Crimson Cutlass or its crew. The only thing left was the calm sea and the faint outline of a ship on the horizon, the ship of no return, sailing away to claim its next victims.